Welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining me. This is part two of the Piano Murphy bed video. I'm not going to talk your ear off. Let's get right back into it. So while we're letting those dry, I'm going to go back to the first piece that we put together. And we're going to add to the pieces that go along the bottom. So you'll need pieces uh, marked G and we'll put the first one on, across the front. And so that should sit just inside of all three of those pieces. Go ahead and throw some glue on there. And then we're going to add piece O on top of that. So you want to run glue around the edges of those three pieces. This is an optional step, but I've taken those three pieces that will be the bottom leg supports and I've just with my embossing tool gone in and just um, pushed in just a little bit of a groove all the way around just to add just a little bit of dimension uh, to those pieces uh, without getting too fancy, um, but just to make it look a little bit more than just like a piece of wood. Um, and so that was pretty easy to do. I didn't measure. I just eyeballed the whole thing. I just put my ruler down about two millimeters from the edge and not going all the way across but leaving about two millimeters on each side and just lightly scored in um, that groove. And I did that all the way around the piece so that it looked like there was a, an inside square um, on on each piece of, of wood. Okay, so I've done that on all three pieces. And once it's once you put the groove in there, you can go back over it without the ruler. Your embossing tool should stay in the groove and you can make them as deep as you like. But I think that's probably good. Okay, so we've given this piece plenty of time to dry. And so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach these three pieces onto the back side of those hinges. So as you remember, we put the bottom part of the hinge right below that line that we drew at 3 8 And now I'm going to turn that piece just so it's a little easier for me to work with. And I'm going to open those hinges to a 90 degree angle. E6000 glue. I'll put my glue just on the top edge of that hinge and the reason why I'm going to put it at 45 degree angle is because I want all of them to be the same height um, and so I'm going to put the piece of wood right down directly onto the back piece and that's where that piece is going to glue into okay. and we'll do that to the other two pieces as well I'm just going left to right because that's just easier being right-handed. So want to make sure you don't get glue down on the actual hinge because if you glue up the hinge and it won't open or close um, then you're going to struggle with it dropping down when it needs to and opening up when it needs to. I'll leave it up like that until it's had a chance to dry. Um, it doesn't have to be completely cured before you put the flaps down but we want to make sure that those hinges aren't going to shift on us when we close them back down. And I want 
want to attach now this bed piece into the cabinet piece. So in order to do that, it's easier to do it with it open like so. Let's start with this side. So all I'm gonna do is line up the two holes that I've drilled. Pop that brad through and then I'll go in on the inside and I'll just open those up. It's probably hard to see through my big fat fingers, but I'll show you in just one second. Okay, so now you can see where I've now just opened those two pieces up and flattened them now along this piece. So I'll do the same to the other side. And so when this is down, these pieces that we have put on the front, they'll flip out to 90 degrees. And they'll actually act as the bed legs at the bottom of the bed. And then of course, when the bed is folded back up, they'll flip back down to the front of the piano this will go up in here and then we'll just close our hinge lid to keep the bed from falling back down. So to make our keyboard we'll bring back in piece K and then we also have our three pieces of wood dowel. So we'll start by gluing on the two side pieces of the wood dowel onto the top of the keyboard. I want to make sure that it's flush on all three sides. And then we'll take our longer piece and we'll set that to the back. Now for the keyboard itself, you have a couple of different options. You can go on Google Images and you can print a keyboard image on a piece of paper, um, apply that to maybe some thick cardstock, and then just lay that in there. That's probably the easiest. Um, if you are familiar with polymer clay, um, and you use that a fair bit, you can make a keyboard out of polymer clay, which is what I'm going to do. To make the piano keys out of polymer clay, I first made a little template so that I knew exactly how big the space was where the keys were going, going to lay. So I have my clay already rolled out. These piano keys are going to be about 1.6 millimeters high. And so whatever height you decide to make, and I think one and a half, between one and a half and two millimeters is probably the right size. Um, just find two pieces of uh, wood if you have them or chipboard or something along, along those lines that you can have two pieces that are the same height and then roll your polymer clay out in between those two pieces. And that way when your roller goes across, you know that whatever's in the middle of those two pieces of wood is going to be the same width as the wood itself. And so that's what I did. I just rolled it out until I had it all um, nice and level and the same height as those two pieces of wood. So we can get rid of those two pieces of wood now. We don't need them. And I'm just going to take my template now and just lay it on top of the polymer clay. 
and I'm going to use that template to cut out the exact size that I'll need for the white keys. So I have this little polymer clay cutting blade and I'm just going to use that paper guide and cut down through the clay. So there's the piece that will be for the white keys. I can take this template off now. And what I want to do is just make little indentations all the way along the top. But I'm going to continue and go all the way up to the top. I'm going to do the same thing for the black keys. I just cut down my template by a half of one of these squares because those keys are not as long and obviously I'm not going to need as many as I did with the white so I'm not too concerned with the length but I will use that template just to cut and make sure that we've got a nice straight edge. I'm going to go a little bit deeper almost all the way through. Some of them I might even go all the way through that's okay um, because these obviously unlike the white keys the black keys are separated. Um, I'm trying to going to I'm going to try and keep them together as much as I can because it's just easier to bake them that way. Um, but I do want to go a little bit deeper because then once they're baked and cooled, I can actually break them apart. So I'm trying to get the same width as I did with the white keys. Now I have this little mini cake pen and because I cut these on parchment paper I can actually just lay those right in the pan. I'm just going to cut it down a little bit so I can fit both of those pieces in the pan at the same time. And make sure that they're nice and flat. I always cover my polymer clay pieces, especially when I'm making them out of white polymer clay, um, because the tops can actually burn quite easily. And we're going to bake that at 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for about 17 or 18 minutes. So the keyboard is baked now. So I'll just give you a little bit of a close up so you can see you can see those ridges uh, that separate the piano keys. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue that into our tray base. Now I apologize right now if you're a piano player because these are not going to be in the right spot, I'm sure. Um, So if you work with polymer clay at all, you may be familiar with this product. It's called Sculpty, and it's just a satin glaze that's used um, when you're using polymer clay. And I'm going to put just a thin coat of that onto those keyboards just to shine them up a little bit.
Let's make a lid for the keys. So you should have two pieces marked P and one piece marked Q. And those will make up the folding lid that we're going to put on that piano. We're also going to need two hinges. So I've got just the one piece marked P and the Q. And I'm going to measure an inch in from each side, which is about 26 millimeters. And that is going to help me with the placement of the hinge. And we're going to glue our hinges on the same way as we did on the top of the piano. We're just going to glue them down with some E6000 glue so that we can open this lid up to get at the keys. So we'll go ahead and attach that to the back of the piano piece. I'm going to make sure that it's flush with the back and that it doesn't overlap on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and put some clamps on there just to keep it nice and tight until it dries. And then I'm going to take the second piece marked P and I'm going to attach it much like we did on the top hinged piece, um, just on the bottom side of that cover. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually attach that to the big unit. So we'll need glue on the three sides, so the back side of the keyboard and then the two sides. And we're going to place it at the bottom of that flat 10 millimeter piece. So as you can see, I've now painted the piano, so everything is done on it. Um, I did want to show you that I've added a little bit of trim. I felt like once I had it all painted that it lacked a little bit of definition. Um, so what I did was I just took some of those uh, four millimeter coffee stir sticks that I have, and I just kind of put an outline around this space plus the line down the front. And then I did the same up on the top. The only thing you'll want to be careful of if you're going, going to do this is that this piece up here cannot be as thick as the rest of them because you still need to have enough clearance there for these tabs to open as well as enough room for the lid to close. So this piece turned out to be about um, maybe three millimeters as opposed to the four millimeters for the rest of the pieces. So just to, wanted to point that out. Let's talk real quick about the mattress that I made for the bed. So if you're measuring the inside of this space, which should be 110 by um, 153 millimeters, what I did was I cut out a piece of chipboard that was two millimeters shorter and narrower than the frame. That leaves you a little bit of room for wrapping material around for your sheets. And then once I had that, I just cut a piece of um, half inch foam, um, the exact same size as the chipboard. And then I just found some fabric and wrapped it around. So I wrapped around first a white 
piece of fabric and that went all the way around and that would be my bottom sheet and then I put a piece of the white just I just put a strip along here to be honest um, I didn't even do a full sheet and then just some pattern fabric for the top and I just glued all of those down um, I will eventually make pillows but I don't think the pillows will fit in here once it's closed so I'm not too concerned about um, putting those in yet. I will maybe make them and put them in a cupboard um, so that they're there um, and available for the bed. But anyway, it fits in there quite nicely and uh, we'll just close her up. And now we're finished. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on the mattress, I did do a video um, for a queen size bed, which is in the homestead bedroom. And you can certainly have a look at that. And I'd certainly go into more detail with that video on how the mattress was made. But it's pretty simple. So you should be able to uh, make one with just that. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching as much as I've enjoyed putting this one together. And we will see you in the next video. Bye for now.